Hello, Falling Spring Youth family. How are you? I hope you're doing well. I hope your families are doing well, and I hope you're meeting with your small group. If you don't have a small group, please let me know, and I will help you to find your group and your group to find you. The goal is that everyone has a small group to meet with, to connect with, real people, real conversations, and hopefully a lot of growth in your faith as well. In addition to a little weekly teaching, I'm also going to issue a competition, a little challenge to the groups every couple of weeks. I'll give your groups a couple of weeks to complete these challenges. And challenge number one is simple. I want you to find a name for your small group. To come up with a good name for your small group. And from what I know of you, you're going to come up with a lot of names that are clever and funny. And I can't wait to, to laugh and to, to hear these names. And I also want your name to be intentional. Uh, I want your name to fit the purpose of your group. So for example, if, if the purpose of your group, the primary reason you meet is to dig into the word of God, you could call yourself the diggers. I know it's not a funny or clever name and I probably wouldn't pick it, but I'm using it as an example that it meets the need that every time you think about your name, hey, we're the diggers, it reminds you, hey, we dig into the word of God together. Or maybe you wanted to grow in your prayer life or to just grow in your ability to pray for one another. And I encourage you to pray for your group members as well as pray for the other small groups that are meeting. I really hope through these groups that our youth group will grow spiritually, that will grow relationally stronger and closer to one another. So that's the first challenge. I'm putting together a panel of experts who are going to pick a winner from the names. They have the criteria that the name has to fit the purpose of the group and they will not know which group is attached to which name. They'll simply see the name and they'll pick a winner. And there will be prizes for these competitions. And so the group that wins the name competition uh, will uh, get a, a prize at one of your future group meetings. Uh, the deadline for this is two weeks from today. Today is September 23rd. It's a Wednesday. So two Wednesdays, first Wednesday in October is the deadline for your group to come up with a an intentional clever, and I'm sure humorous, name for your small group. Uh, today, I'd like to share uh, just some thoughts that were on my heart. I, I sat down earlier and I prayed and I tried to think, what, what could I share that would be challenging and hopefully encouraging to all of you? And I just scribbled some things down on a big piece of paper, and I'd like to share those with you. But first, let's pray. Lord God, thank you so much for your presence in our lives. Thank you for everyone who's listening to this, watching this, students and leaders and parents and who knows who else. God, I ask you to bind us together in love, that you would help us really feel connected to one another through your spirit. I pray for these small groups that they would thrive, that there would be laughter and real connection, vulnerability, honesty, that there will be a hunger to dig into your word. I pray that everyone would learn how to pray even more, that their prayer life would grow deeper, and that they would have tons of fun um, and really feel supported and loved. And I pray that you would help me to share some thoughts that would challenge and encourage all of us. Speak through me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. The big idea today has to do with what's going on on the outside versus what's happening on the inside. And so yesterday, I was pooped on. Uh, I was literally, literally pooped on. I was sitting on a patio outside of a barn at a memorial service where I was helping with some music. So I was on this patio. There were people inside the barn. There were people out in the grassy area, and I was on this patio while the minister was sharing the message, I saw and heard and felt something to the left of me. And I looked over, I thought maybe some water had dripped from the roof of the barn, but it wasn't water, it was bird poop. A bird pooped on me, leaned out over the edge of the roof and, and pooped on me. I imagined it uh, was laughing at me as it flew away. And I'm sitting in front of all these people at a memorial service while a pastor is preaching and, and I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't react. I couldn't say, ew, I couldn't say, how dare you? I, I couldn't 
take the bird and flip it. I couldn't do anything um, because I was there, but I, but I grabbed a piece of paper. I wasn't able to do that and I just kind of wiped it off and put the paper under a chair so it wouldn't blow away. But here's the important thing. The, the bird poop, it was disgusting. It, it looked bad, it smelled bad, it was, it was disgusting, but it stayed on the outside. I didn't allow it to get inside. I didn't put it in my mouth, I didn't shove it up my nose or put it in my ears. It stayed on the outside of me and I didn't let it get on the inside. Big idea tonight, we're gonna to talk about outside versus inside. So we're in a pandemic and this pandemic has created challenges, but it has revealed even more. What do I mean by that? Uh, let me use the example of school. The pandemic has created challenges in how we do school, how schools educate students. So it's created the challenge, but has revealed even more what is happening on the inside of students, parents, teachers, community members. Two different people, similar situation. Let's say two students in virtual school. Uh, they have the same teacher or teachers, same classes, same situation, relatively similar at home. One student responds with strength, the other with weakness. One student responds with gratitude that they still have an opportunity to learn even though they can't be physically in the school. And the other student responds with more of a sense of entitlement. And I can't believe I can't get this. I can't believe all this was taken from me. One student sees it as an opportunity. Others are just crushed under what has been lost. So. The pandemic has created the same challenge on the outside, but it has revealed different things on the inside of, of different people. Many of us are focused, again, using the example of school, of getting things back on track, of back to the way, they, back to the way things used to be, or maybe even better. And what I'm hoping for is that we find a new normal that's even better than what we had before, that, that 2021, School in 2021 is even better than school was in 2018 or 2019 or, or any years or any time before the pandemic. And I'm hoping and praying for that, that we get to something even, even better. And many of us are focused on that. And that's good. And, and I, want, I want that. I want us to get back to normalcy in education. And I know the board met last night in Chambersburg to, to make some decisions to, to take steps in that direction. And I'm hopeful that we can get you all back in school and that we can get things on track. And there's nothing wrong with, with hoping for that. However, when the desire to return is accompanied by uh, focusing on the negatives in such a way that you miss the opportunities that are right in front of you, that's where there, there can be some issues. Because if it's not a pandemic, it's going to be something else. Life is going to throw challenges at you. People are going to throw challenges at you. All of us are imperfect people and so we're going to let one another down or hurt one another at different times. Hopefully not. Hopefully we're not the ones doing the, the letting down or the hurting, but, but it will happen. We will have challenges in our lives and how we respond to them is important and what they reveal on the inside is, is important because the stuff that breaks us is not going to fix us. The stuff that breaks us is not going to fix us. If virtual school has caused you anxiety or frustration or anger or, or sadness, we need to remember that, that school, whether it's virtual or in person, is not going to fix you on, on the inside. Your pain, your frustration, your anxiety may not be your fault, but healing and strength and regaining uh, a sense of making the most of these opportunities, that is your responsibility. So the pain may not be your fault, but the healing is, is your responsibility. And so I want us to think about our inside. I want us to think about what's going on on the inside and really give God the access to transform us in ways that can turn despair into hope and can turn frustration into gratitude for the opportunities that we, we do have. Again, I want us to get back in school. I want you all to get back in school. But what if in the meantime, uh, virtual learning actually leads to a revolution in your own life instead of um, all of this 
negative and being upset about what was lost? What if it turns into a revolution where you learn to take responsibility for your own learning? What if it leads to um, a whole new perspective on things where where you learn to actually uh, appreciate and value the gift of learning more than you ever have before in, in your lives? And some of you are like, oh, blah, blah, I don't want to even hear about this. But please hear me. I believe that strength is oftentimes uh, bred from adversity. Um, when we go through difficult times, we don't have to allow those difficult times to turn into a prison. We can allow them to turn into a school, to turn into a, a, an opportunity for growth and learning. And some of the strongest people I know are people who went through incredible adversity. A story I thought of, this, this was not a major adversity in my life, but when I went to college at IUP, Every freshman is given an academic advisor and that academic advisor, their role, their job is to help these new students figure out what classes they need to schedule and, and how they need to schedule them into the future to fulfill all of their liberal studies or gen ed requirements as well as their major requirements and even choosing a major so that they're able to graduate, hopefully on time. My academic advisor, uh, this professor, she was a wonderful lady uh, very friendly, but I only met with her once because she told me in that first meeting, I'm completely new to this. I haven't been trained yet and I have no idea what I'm doing. So here we go. And she had me in some classes that I didn't think that I needed. Uh, and I, I wanted to free up the time um, from those classes to, to focus on things that I actually needed to do. And so I made a decision in that, that I wasn't going to simply say, oh, well, I have a bad advisor, I'll just go with it. Or I wasn't going to say, man, I wish I had a better advisor. I wish I had someone that actually knew what they were doing. I decided to take responsibility for my own class load in college. And so I got an, a book, um, the IUP requirement for graduation, like the whole deal is a thick book, had a lot of numbers in it, a lot of different things. And I, I read it. Uh, I read everything I needed to in it. I didn't read the whole thing, but I read what I needed to. I read a lot of it and I took responsibility. And as a result of that, I realized that, you know, I didn't need this class and, and I would take the, the time and energy and the money that was going into that and put it into something I actually needed. And I was able to not only graduate in four years when many of my fellow students were graduating in five or more, but I was able to, to go part-time my last semester and save again the time and money and bandwidth uh, in that last semester because I took responsibility for that. It was an opportunity where I could either wish I wasn't in it and give up and complain, or or I could say, hey, I'm gonna make the most of this. I'm gonna learn. And I was able to help a lot of my other like fellow students who were going through a similar thing because I had done the work of figuring out all of these requirements for, for graduation. I tell you this story not to say, well, nice, nice job, Brad, but to say, like, take responsibility, see, the current struggles and current challenges as, as an opportunity, as a gift, as a privilege to give you some perspective. And I believe that doing this is impossible without God because God is the one who changes us on the inside. And I believe that, and this is good news for us, that God wants to change us for the better on the inside. But the thing we all need to understand is that God, God will not change us where we don't give him access. God will not work and change us on the inside where we do not give him access. And so I wanna challenge you to give God access to your life. I wanna look at one scripture. This is from Luke chapter five. And it says this, Jesus would often go to some place where he could be alone and pray. Jesus would often go to some place where he could be alone and pray. Jesus had a lot of demands on his life from the disciples, from the crowds, from people who wanted miracles, from people who wanted healing and, and wanted to learn more. Crowds were always around Jesus, often around Jesus. And Jesus would often go to some place where he could be alone and pray. Other versions of this passage talk about Jesus going to the wilderness or lonely places or desolate places. Jesus was intentional about 
carving out time in his life and saying no to the expectations of others who wanted him to do something else and going to a place where he could be alone with God, with his father and, and pray. This one passage encapsulates or, or uh, reminds me of a pattern in Jesus' life. And you see it in other passages in the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. A number of times the gospel writers say, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and went off to pray. He got up before everyone else so he could have time to pray, to, to give his father access, to give him strength and perspective and change him on the inside. Many of you have heard the story about Peter walking on the water. Before that story, the, the whole reason Jesus walked to the disciples who were in a boat and Jesus was on shore is because there was this crowd and Jesus told the disciples, get into the boat, I'll dismiss the crowd. And then Jesus went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. One night he stayed awake all night praying before he called his 12 disciples. Jesus gave the father access to his life, to his heart, to his mind, to change him on the inside. If this pandemic has revealed some things in you that are not good, and I think it has in all of us. And let's, you know, let's just say it. Like all of us have things that need changing and difficulties like a pandemic often bring those to the surface. They don't cause them. They just bring them out. They bring them out. Things that are going on on the inside that need to change. Some of us, all of us, I think, have work to do on the inside. And the way we do that is by giving God access to the inside. And the way we give God access is by going somewhere often where we can be alone and pray. And I would add, spend time in the word of God as well. Are you saying no to the expectations of others at times so that you can be alone and spend time with God in prayer and in the Bible? Are you saying no to extra time on social media so that you can Go someplace where you can be alone and be with God. Struggles will reveal. They'll create challenges on the outside, but they'll reveal areas of growth on the inside. I want to challenge you in your groups to be honest about the areas of growth that have come up. Be honest about the ugly stuff that, that this pandemic, that the challenges around it have, have brought out and pray for one another and encourage one another. I'm going to put some, some questions in the comments, not the comments, the description of this video, and I'll send them out to leaders for you to talk about in, in your groups. And again, I challenge you to pray for one another that you would be willing and able to give God more access, more access to the inside of you so that no matter what happens on the outside, whether it's a pandemic or a relationship struggle or any other challenge or getting pooped on, that those challenges will bring out good stuff. They'll bring out the good that God is doing, the strength that God is putting in us. And I pray that you will walk in strength and victory in your faith, that the things on the outside won't shake you, that when others are shaken around you, you will be solid and anchored in Christ. Let's pray. God, thank you that you are a rock. We can build our faith on a solid rock, immovable. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to give you more access to our hearts, to our minds, to our strength, to our souls, to everything that we are. And I pray for these groups, help them to be honest and authentic tonight and support and challenge one another in Jesus name. Amen. I love you all. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Reach out to me if you need anything, if you have ideas and please within two weeks, first by the first Wednesday in October, give me your group name and I will uh, reveal the winner uh, the second Wednesday in October when I when I put a video out that week. Um, I plan to put a video out next Wednesday with a little bit of teaching. It might be me, it might be someone else. I haven't decided yet. 
And we're going to pick a theme here for uh, the coming month or two that we'll focus on as well. And I'll let you know that next week. So enjoy the rest of your group meeting. I love you all. Take care.